Okay, everybody come back into class now. Get you get in your seat and get your pencils and your your notebooks and everybody settle down. Come on, all you students of history, you students of the law, settle down. I'm ready to teach you a few things. What happens if President Donald Trump does not concede the election? Mm -hmm. I talked about it in a previous video, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut right to the chase. It's happened two times in history. It happened in 1800. It's happened in 1824. And if you'll remember, Hillary Clinton told Joe Biden not to concede. You remember that? Before this election, she told him, do not concede. You know why she told him that? I hate to say it, smart woman. She knows the law. But most Americans don't. Most of you watching me don't know it. I didn't know it. But now I do, and knowledge is power. And I promise you, Donald Trump knows what I'm fixing to tell you. So do all of his lawyers. Okay, so here's what happens. Real, real simple. The most powerful thing that keeps the peace in the United States of America is not required by law. It's just a custom. And um, it's called a concession speech. We've been doing it for a long time, but there's no law that requires a concession speech. However, it does aid in the peaceful transfer of power. So normally when a presidential candidate is in a fight for the presidency. It's a powerful position. It's like a throne, a king fighting for his throne. He has supporters. And those supporters are literally ready to fight, if you will, for their guy. Hey, that's just the way it works, folks. It's been that way since the dawn of time. At the moment of the concession speech is when those people that support this guy are pretty much given the green light to simmer down, go back home, it's all over. It's a surrender. It's a white flag of surrender. But it is not required in the Constitution. It's simply a custom. It's a wonderful custom. Once a president concedes, the battle is over. There's no more legal fighting. There's nothing. Everything after that just sort of happens with a rubber stamp. Then the electors get together, they cast their votes in Washington, D.C. The president is officially elected and the votes are certified. And that certification gives that man the presidency. But more importantly, his concession speech from the opponent is what gives him legitimacy and a transfer without drama. But Two times in our history, presidents did not concede the election. Why? Well, not because they were trying to be rambunctious, but just like Al Gore, they knew that something was off and they were not ready to give up a fight with a margin less than 1% in all the battleground states. According to the law, Georgia is going to be recounted. We do not have any official result anywhere in the nation. Pennsylvania is going to be recounted. Arizona is still being counted. Nevada is going to be recounted. We have a total recount coming. Now, after that recount, the president has legal options to go to court to prove irregularity. So let's just say that none of that works and the president still will not concede the election. The Constitution, Article Amendment 12 of the United States Constitution gives you the answer of what will happen. If they cannot rule on it in the court and he does not concede and there's no certification of an undisputable majority, then we go to the House of Representatives. When we get to the House of Representatives, there are 400 and 75 members of that house. The election is null and void at that point. It's like it never happened. The numbers do not matter any longer. This has happened twice in history. I got a feeling it's fixing to happen again. 
At that moment, the election becomes obsolete, and now the president will be elected by the Congress, the House of Representatives. Now, immediately, that, that strikes fear in the heart of a conservative, because guess who controls the House? The Democrats. But not so fast. The Constitution goes on to say in that article that each state in the Congress gets one vote, not each representative. Each state gets one vote for the president. Well, there are 50 states in the House. Of those 50, 37 are Republican. At that moment, a Republican Congress will officially, constitutionally vote in the next president. Why do you think Donald Trump has not conceded? He knows these things that I'm telling you. He understands that there was illegitimate votes cast. He understands that votes are still going on. Now, he may get tired of the fight. I don't know. I don't think he is, though. But he does have a constitutional remedy to his dilemma. This is going to be interesting to watch. But remember, Hillary Clinton told Joe Biden, do not concede no matter what. Now, why did she tell him that? Because she knows what I'm telling you. And so Joe Biden has won a few battleground states with less than 1%. Those are automatic recounts. We will not have a winner till we have a certification. If we can't get a certification that's not contested in the courts, it will go to the House of Representatives just before Inauguration Day. Now you might know why the Panther is getting real quiet in the background, waiting for the attack. I'm not saying that's how it's going to go, but the Constitution foresaw this. The Constitution made a way for an illegitimate election to be overturned in the House of Representatives. So class is dismissed, and now you know the truth.